Hey everybody, it's Joel Howe, and today we're going to talk about image bit depth. Basically, how many bits per channel are in your images that you're using, and why that's important. So, just to get a quick overview here, we have, uh, I just listed out a few of the major uh, values in terms of bit depth that you'll need, uh, 8 bits, 16 bits, um, and, and how that correlates to how many colors can be stored in a single image channel. So for an 8-bit image, uh, such as a JPEG or a, a PNG file, you're going to see the ability to store up to 256 colors in each of the red, green, and blue color channels. So um, for a 16-bit per channel image such as uh, that there are 16-bit uh, PNGs or 48-bit PNGs total and um, EXR and, and Targas and, and TIFFs and other images that support 16 bits per channel uh, you'll see uh, we double the bit depth but we, we definitely more than double the um, number of colors with 65,000 uh, co uh, colors available in a, in each channel. So 65,000 colors or levels of red, green, and blue. And 32 bits per channel has billions of colors and you might see the 32-bit images listed as HDR or uh, high dynamic range images uh, and uh, so we'll talk a little bit about those as well. Um, but the focus today, I really just want to talk about the image, the 8-bit and compare it to the 16-bit, and we'll use Photoshop to do that. So what I have here is uh, I took a render from 3ds Max. I made a very low contrast render uh, where we don't have, uh, we're not using the full tonal range. And uh, so we might want to make an edit to this, either in Photoshop or After Effects, to, to boost the contrast of, of the image. So to do that, um, we'll, we'll have to start with the image. And uh, I want to show that with the, the more information, the more levels of color that we have in the image, the better the results if we have to manipulate this. So uh, first off is our JPEG image. And uh, so I have the JPEG here and I'm going to, we'll add uh, an adjustment layer and I'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer. And uh, I'm just going to really kind of crank out the, uh, you can see the, the histogram in the background here. You can see there's not a whole lot of, of, um, uh, of, of highlights. So the curves are going to drive the, the, the the really make some major adjustments to the to the image here and um, so I want to do this in a way that we really kind of crank this out and uh, what I hope you can see in the video is there are a lot of additions in terms of color and noise that, that were added here so we've got uh, some greens and, and purples on the door uh, JPEGs are great for emailing, posting on the web, because they're a lossy format, their file size is very small, but uh, in terms of saving your renders or if you scan artwork in through a scanner, it's not a good idea to save these as JPEGs because you're going to have to, you're, you're throwing away information when you do that. So if you know you're going to be manipulating something in Photoshop or uh, in After Effects or, or other tools, you want to save it at a higher bit depth so that you have the more information. So let me do this. I'm going to duplicate this layer, this adjustment layer, and I'll duplicate that to the PNG file. And it's the same render, and if I toggle over to the PNG, you can already see, and I'll toggle, now we're on the PNG, and there's the curves. I'll turn off the visibility. That's the original image, and here's the curves. Now there's already a good difference in terms of we don't have the noise that was introduced with the JPEG. So uh, so already here's the benefit of, now granted this is a very major adjustment, but uh, here's the benefit of PNG over JPEG. And um, and uh, we, we actually get a, a really good uh, uh, result here. Photoshop does a really 
nice job um, interpolating this as well. So we we end up with a with looks what looks like a really clean um, uh, image here. I'm going to just zoom in twice, and you can start to see some banding in the um, in some of the gradients here. So there's there's some uh, uh, posterization or or banding. You can see basic uh, uh, pixels that are exactly the same color here. So now I also have a 48-bit PNG, which is th instead of uh, this PNG is a 24-bit, which is you have three channels, RGB, red, green, and blue, and you have 8 bits per channel, which gives you the 24-bit. So now the 48-bit, as you can probably imagine, is three channels, RGB, with 16 bits per channel. Um, just to confirm this, our 24-bit PNG, if I go to image mode, you'll see it's 8 bits per channel. And uh, I'm going to take that same exact curves adjustment layer and I'll duplicate that over to the 48-bit PNG. So now when I go here, you can see uh, same exact image except image mode or 16 bits per channel. And you can see that that noise that was introduced on the 8 bits per channel image is now a smooth gradation. So 16 bits per channel lets me do even more manipulation without in introducing a whole lot of noise into the scene. Um, and uh, I'm just going to zoom in even more. So this is the 16 bits per channel. And that's the 8 bits per channel. Um, I should. I also uh, want to just give Photoshop uh, some credit here that they've done a great job uh, in in what's a what's a really dramatic edit to the image. And even with the 8-bit image, we're seeing very good um, very good results uh, that we we could we could filter the noise out or or manipulate this. But for a file size that's on the same order of, ag of magnitude. Uh, the 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 um, si uh, 16 bits per channel P PNG is really uh, only uh, two or three times the size. Let's say three times the size of the 8 bits per per channel PNG. We we end up having uh, some some really great results for not a lot more disk space. Uh, and hard drives are relatively cheap when we're talking about terabytes of of hard drive capacity. So my suggestion uh, to summarize stop using JPEGs number one that's the big one never uh, never render out or scan images to JPEG uh, PNG is a good starting point again that's also going to have a alpha channel in the PNG format and if you can uh, consider 16 bit PNG uh, per, 16 bit per channel PNG and I also wanted to show uh, another file format that you might consider and that is the EXR. Uh, I've got a 32-bit EXR here. This is a um, um, this is an EXR file. It's 32 bits per channel. So this is your your four uh, four billion levels of color for each channel. Um, what you don't see here is a lot of um, uh, you, you have some real limitations in Photoshop in terms of what features you can use and uh, you still have to convert this back to an 8-bit image to share it on the web uh, so so there are some lim limitations that make I think make using 32-bit images a bit much um, when for most people the 16-bit will do but if you do wanna if you do wanna go ahead and render out as EXR images and I'll, I'll talk another time about about EXR it is a file format that I really like um, there are some the the amount of detail that we have here is just amazing in terms of um, in terms of being able to the edits that we can make um, banding doesn't doesn't happen at all uh, we end up with uh, if I extrapolate this out you know, we can add a lot of contrast here and, and just completely play with with the uh, uh, the range of the image and tighten this down and come up with some insane contrast and uh, 
you can see as we zoom in there's no banding all the gradients are smooth there's no there's no pixelation so 32 bits per channel is amazing and if you can if you you know if you have the means go ahead but uh, for the most part 16 bits per channel is is going to be the best best uh, bang for the buck and um, it's getting you that uh, a, a massive increase in the color information uh, it's still very friendly in terms of workflows in Photoshop and After Effects and it's not too much more painful in terms of hard drive space so uh, so that's it, and and uh, uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you enjoyed this, and that uh, you start to consider 16-bit per channel for your for your uh, images. Thanks.